where are the good chatbots? Uh, I want to give a perspective on creating a, the first uh, commercially available knowledge base and knowledge engine that actually works. Um, my name is Sylvain. I'm the co-founder and CEO of BotPress. And uh, so BotPress, we are a conversational AI uh, company. We are open source and we provide uh, you know all the tools for developers to create chatbots, uh, you know, all the way from idea to design to publishing and production and then making the bot uh, with analytics and misunderstood modules and even human uh, escalation. But today I'm not here to talk about bot press. I'm here to talk about NLU and the future of the industry. Um, the, it's going to be a, a five part uh, discussion. So each part will take about three minutes. We will Lightspeed go through uh, the creation of an engine from scratch using just slides. And I'm uh, apologizing in advance for the style of the slides. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm hoping that the content is, is better than the, uh, the continent. So uh, the state of the industry. Um, so the first question that every VC asked me when I raised money, uh, because we raised the Series A uh, last year, uh, about $15 million. And the first question all the VCs ask are like, well, it's been years. We, we gave you guys billions, literally, in the industry. Where's the money at? You know, where's, where's the good chatbots at? Because you promised us in 2017 that there would be, you know, like good chatbots. Um, so we spent billions. We had hundreds of thousands of people working on chatbots. Uh, and on the tools, there's thousands of vendors. I think their Gartner says we're like a thousand to a hundred vendors. Um, millions of people have been building bots, and there is very obvious billion dollar opportunities to automate conversations, right? So all the ingredients are there, but somehow the results uh, are are not not as strong as uh, as we promised. So the promises we made in 2016 when the when the hype started is that, hey, there's going to be more data. The algorithms are going to get better. The hardware will get better. The models will improve. Uh, there's going to be more talent, you know, um, rushing into that space. The craft will develop and the tools will also get better. Um, and there's been tremendous improvement in the baseline NLP models, right? We've seen, you know, like Elmo and Bird and, uh, and GPT and GPT-3 and what, you know, uh, just recently Tom uh, last week by, by Google. So like huge improvements on the language models, but it seems like the chatbots haven't really followed the, the Moore's law in terms of themselves improving. So what went wrong? Uh, can we blame, you know, the intelligence and the good intentions of <laughs> the hundreds of thousands of people working super hard you know, well-educated engineers and data scientists. I don't think so. I don't think that's fair. So I think um, what went wrong is the, the way that we build them. So we started questioning the way that we build chatbots at BotPress. Um, and interestingly enough, it's still very much the same thing in 2022, the how you build a chatbot versus 2016. Uh, we still use the same intent-based NLU engines. They're now super major, but they really plateaued in terms of the performance that they can uh, offer us. So the second part is, well, what would we, you know, if, if not intent, then, then what could be the solution? Well, let's look at what we would like for from a good uh, NLU engine. So the criteria, at least for me and for my team would be that all well, low skilled operators meaning subject matter experts should be able to build the chatbots, not requiring uh, data scientists and NLU engineers to craft the data sets, right? Like we need people that know about the knowledge to actually be able to create the data sets. Um, ideally, there would be low effort and low maintenance um, to build and to maintain. Um, they would be performing well, uh, in the sense that they would provide useful, concise, and accurate answers to our questions. And ideally, they would improve with the baseline NLP models so that we don't have to you know, rinse and repeat and always recreate the mod, you know, all our chatbots from scratch as the improvements are, are being um, done. 
So um, I would like us to dissect you know, the, the intent based on LU engines, because that's super important to understand what we could do better. So I'm going to make a super, super superficial um, um, analysis of what an engine looks like. I apologize for the data sciences and the people working on those engines. I know it's more complex than that, but the, 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 the idea is still there. It's still valid. And I'm hoping that it, you know, it, it is, it, it's drawing a, a picture that is accurate enough for people to understand how they work. So um, let's start with the problems though, because it's funny because the problems are pretty much a one-on-one -on -one mapping with what we would like a good engine to. So they require a highly skilled operator. Um, you, know, you know, you need to know how the engine works before you can, before you can, you know, get really good results. Like each, you know, each engine has their own way of working. You know, if you're using RASA, it's different than dialog flow. And you know, like one data set to, uh, you know, from an engine to the other doesn't perform the same way. So you kind of need to know the inner workings of the engine to to get the best results. Uh, they're super high maintenance and effort, and actually they they are exponentially more difficult to maintain. Uh, the more not, you know, the the more labels or the more intense that you have, uh, sort of the, the maintenance cost and effort goes goes exponential, which is crazy. Um, and um, in my opinion, they perform super low. So they don't. They're pretty bad at generalization. They're good at generalizing syntax, but they're very bad at generalizing um, semantics, which is to me. You know, semantics equals understanding, which is natural language understanding. They they should be able to understand, uh, but they can't do that. And on top of that, you know, they're pretty bad at filtering out this, the fluff. So uh, we've seen people using uh, chatbots, and they you know, like they they type a super long paragraph, they explain their life, and they don't understand that the chatbots. You know, it just it, it's confusing them uh, because the the current NLU engine can't really filter out what's not necessary. Um, they kind of just average all the words, you know, into a sentence of that which isn't very helpful. Um, they have some problems dealing with multiple intents in, in a single utterance, but that's very common. In fact, it's more common to see multiple intents than a single one. Um, taking context into consideration, including the conversation uh, history, is a challenge. That's not something that's modeled by default in the engines. Um, and even understanding the nuances in the sentence is, is really hard. So let's see, um, let's see how to build one of these engines. So this is a simplified view of your chatbot domain. Let's assume that you have two knowledge uh, artifacts that you want to answer. And you have seven FAQs on your website and you have kind of two answers for them. So the first thing that you would do um, is you would try to map all the FAQs to your knowledge articles, right? So the red points associated with the red document, pretty simple stuff. Um, you kind of see two axes there. Um, because I, I wanted to represent the sentences into a vector space. And that's done through the language models, uh, more known as uh, embeddings, language embeddings. And just for the sake of simplicity here, I've just put two dimensions, but you know, in, in practice, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of dimensions. But you kind of see the point where you know, each sentence, each question is represented as, as a point in X and Y coordinates. And so this is how you would do it. So you would associate each question with, with the knowledge answer. But that's not super practical because as soon as you have a new, a new question that you haven't mapped out that match exactly <laughs> to it, then you know, what do you do? So that's a concept that we call probably approximately correct uh, you know, in machine learning. But what you want to do is provide the probably approximately correct answer for this new question that you've never seen before. So the solution is that you use classifiers. So you would create those intent classifiers, you would group them. So in that case, you would create two, uh, three groups. 
Um, and you would map those groups to labels. And those labels would map to the knowledge that you want to answer. Pretty obvious, pretty simple. Um, and whenever and you can see those groups have a radius. So whenever you have a new question, you kind of see in which group they fall in. And if they fall into the, you know, a known group, then you just answer the same thing as the others. That's in general how they work. Very, very simplified. Now we've got better embeddings over time. And those embeddings have allowed us to, because they, there were some margin of error on the position, right? Um, now those, those better embeddings got us a, a more precise and more accurate position of the words and the sentences in the graph. Uh, so we've seen, you know, word to vag, fast X, MO, bird, GPT, and whatnot. Um, so that's good. And it's improving somehow a bit the, the performance of mental based engines. And we've also got fancier classifiers. So instead of having just, you know, like round groups like this, you now have like fancy way of modeling and classifying those, those groups. And so, you know, we went all the way from <laughs> initially linear regressions all the way to, you know, CNNs and even more like transformer based uh, classifiers. Now, what's wrong with this approach? Well, many things. So for one, what do you do about the out of scope, right? So if you have a new question that is just on the boundary, of that cluster, should you answer with answer A or should you say, I don't know? So that's that's one thing that isn't very well defined. Another one is confusion between the two classes. So if you have uh, an answer that kind of fit both classifiers, then it's unsure what you should, what you should answer. Another, problem is refactoring. Um, so the refactoring time actually is, is exponential with the number of classes that you have. But if you want to split one cluster into two, then you need to relabel all the utterances part of the cluster you want to refactor. So that time is actually uh, quite a lot as, you, as your knowledge base kind of grows and you have you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of utterances per intent. Um, and you also have interdependency between the clusters. And so if you add the data point, you can kind of see the impact on, on the clusters. So the, the, the blue cluster kind of is affected by the red cluster. What that means is, you know, as you add intents and as you modify intents, it sort of has impacts on all the other intents. And so that's pretty bad because just adding knowledge to your bot actually can break your bot with totally unrelated questions. And that's a very common problem with NLP So, but all of this, all, all of these problems are kind of minor compared to the bigger problem, which is that they just don't care about knowledge at all. In fact, they don't even look at knowledge. They just look at labels, right? They, they're not trained on the knowledge itself. Uh, you just train the engines to associate uh, a cluster to a label. Um, and so if you're not caring about the knowledge, what are you really training the bot to do? You're not, you know, you actually don't care about understanding why you group things together. And that's a bit confusing because it's called NLU, natural language understanding. And you kind of don't care about understanding the principle and why you created the cluster. And so what are they learning? If they're not learning to understand, they're mostly overfitting on syntax and topics. So in reality, they're glorified topic classifiers and syntax matchers. Um, so now let's look at how we would build a knowledge-based engine. So <laughs> the very obvious first thing that we should do, I think is care about the knowledge. Now, if you didn't care about the questions, that would just be called a search engine, right? So it's very simple. 
So let's let's take a step back. What you should do is actually just start off with the content, map the content using the same and betters, but actually learn how that content relates to the questions, right? It's a very simple idea. And then once you, you've done that, you can get more sophisticated and then you can even create labels to understand how your knowledge is actually being map mapped to the questions. That's really oversimplified, but it's actually just the reverse operation of doing an intent-based one. It's doing knowledge-based one. So you start with the knowledge and you learn how that relates to the questions that are being asked your, your chatbot. Um, so the last part is that I actually want to talk about Open Book, which is the first commercially available knowledge-based NLU engine. So um, we've been working on this for, let's say, maybe two years now. Uh, it's actually being released as we speak. So it, it was meant to be released tomorrow. Um, we, since this conference is so timely, we wanted to put it together today uh, to show you guys how that works. Um, it's still, it's some private beta, so I cannot share the details of how it's being implemented. I don't want to get, uh, you know, ahead of all the engineering details and the, the engineering team and marketing team, because there's going to be a lot of content and a lot of, uh, um, you know, sharing about how this works, uh, and this will come in the weeks to come. Um, but today, what I can share with you is a bit how how if that looks like, you know, the process of building this new engine and the results that we've got so far. So what we did is uh, we created, so we needed a data set to test this new engine, right? So we created a fictional hotel use case. Um, it's the Montreal Hotel and Suite chatbot <laughs> data set that by the way, we will be publishing this data set. Um, we hired three experts um, using intent-based models. Uh, each expert had years of experience building chatbots. They're well-known people in the chatbot industry. Um, they are probably the best, you know, with each respective engine to build those. So we chose one on RASA, one on IBM Watson, and one on Dialogflow. So this was our, you know, the baseline comparison for open book. Then we gave them 150 knowledge facts about the hotel. And we uh, hired a bunch of people. We crowdsourced 5,500 questions to ask about those 150 facts. Um, this gave us 22,000 answers from all the different engines. And then we got 10 data points, we hired a bunch of data labelers that we didn't know, uh, crowdsourced, um, and we asked them 10 data points for each pair of question and answer. And each question is annotated by two workers for a total of 4,400 data points. All of this will be open source, available to the NLU community so that we can build better engines. Uh, this, I believe, should be the biggest NLU data set ever open sourced, uh, and super happy to share this. Now, let's talk results. Um, so if you have this new engine, so how did, how did it perform? So um, let's look at the criteria of what makes a good engine. So low-skilled operator, this one's a check because we took somebody that uh, you know, has zero knowledge about NLU and NLP, and that person could create a bot with open book without any problem. So that's a check. Uh, low effort to build and maintain. Um, the person that created the, the hotel book um, spent 40 times less time effort build, building the bot than the ones on the other platforms. The performance, uh, the, the engine score 215 percent more accurately to the questions than the other engines. Plus, um, as the NLP models improve over time, um, it also automatically gets better. So let me uh, show you. So what we have, so if you go to openbook.bodpress.com, uh, this is the landing page that we just put online. Uh, hopefully this one works. 
we have uh, a real real time demo here. So open book literally speaks for itself. So open book can answer questions about open book. So it's kind of like inception style. You can ask it questions. It will talk to you and answer all your questions. Um, now there might be some issues because I see we are like many hundred people here in uh, in the conference. There's a rate limiter on this. Uh, so if everybody try a question all at the same time, it won't work. It's only one question per person per second. So you've got to be patient for it to answer. But if you want to try this, so it's available for all the messaging channels. So it's and all the chatbot stacks. So you can actually use it as part of your dialogue flow chatbot. You can use it with Microsoft Bot Framework, with BotQuest, with Wasa, Rasa. It works with all the frameworks. And uh, it's also available on all the, all the channels. And how it works, super simple. So you create um, a knowledge base, which we call a book. And you feed it markdown files. Very, very simple. And there's only one API call to do to compile your book into a knowledge base. And then it's ready. You just you just ask it questions. So it's very, very simple to use. And if you want to be the first to build with it, uh, we have a private beta starting very soon. So you just put your email here and you can request an access. Uh, as soon as we open up, we'll send you some, uh, an API key and some documentation. Now I want to share the, the data set. So I want to show you a bit like how we created this. So we had um, the 5,000 questions. Uh, we put them here on the Excel. You can see there's <laughs> there's a, a total of eight annotators right now. So we're not done annotating the results. But as we make progress, the results compile in real time so we can see how the, the engine performs. But you can see here, so people rate on those 10 axes. So did the answer contain excessive information? Uh, was the answer uh, containing any anything unrelated or extra? Uh, was the answer uh, just a repetition of the facts? You know, did it look like robotic or not? Uh, was the answer truthful? Like, did it contain any falsehoods? Uh, was the answer not correct? Uh, or was it partially correct? Or was it fully correct? Uh, did the bot say, uh, I don't know when it should have answered? Uh, did it not understand? And did it correctly say that it didn't understand when it shouldn't have understood? So those were the, the 10 axes on which we asked the, the people to rate the chatbots. And the results are here. <laughs> okay, so my session has expired. Uh, okay, results are here. So these are partial results. So we're still compiling the results, but so far, here's what we have. So um, approximately, so open book, you can see here, um, answer is being correct. So we're about two, a bit more over twice as accurate as all the other engines. In fact, we're more accurate than if you combine Dynapro and Rasa together, which is funny. Um, and it's the only engine that correctly answers when it does. I don't know when it doesn't know. Um, and it's also less wrong here, uh, twice or three times as less wrong. And so um, as we make progress, we'll keep updating those sheets. We'll open source everything. We give access to everyone to those data sets and the results so that you can uh, actually start building knowledge base chatbots. Uh, and we also hope that our competitors also start building knowledge base and LU engines because I truly genuinely care about the quality of the chatbots. And I think that it's highly unproductive to build, to continue building on top of the intent based uh, models. So um, yeah, that, that's it for, uh, that's all I have uh, today. That's it's been 25 minutes. Uh, I think we have still five awesome. minutes for questions. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, so we're going to open it up to questions. We'll see how everybody's doing. And then we're going to have one last uh, panel. Okay. So let's see. 
Well, thank you for sharing the uh, uh, the link there. Uh, people are saying that you had some great results. Um, yeah. We're asking for the URL, amazing. Okay. Um, okay, let's see, go to the chat. In the meantime, Sylvia, and you can, uh, get, people are asking if you could share the Google Sheets. Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah, I, will. I, I, I lost access myself. I don't know what happened. I'll, I'll share the link. Uh, yeah. What would be the best way uh, at the time? Awesome. Um, I think the best way, well, we can try two different ways. Like if you want to do it now, you can you can drop a link in the and, and share it with everybody in the chat. And then you can also yep. send it to me. And then what I'll do is like, I'll include it after we post process the video. So <laughs> one okay. of the questions we, we get all the time is this recorded? Yeah, Zoom automatically records it. You'll have access. And then um, after the conference is done, you're going to be able to come watch it on Zoom events. Eventually, we're going to also post process it, send everyone links uh, to these recordings like here with Sylvian. And you also get that link that you guys have requested. So, um, yeah, so that was the last question we got. Let's see uh, if we have any more questions. Well, I'll ask you my, one of my favorite questions is, is there something that people should be wondering or thinking about that they aren't? Is there, some, is there something you wish more people would ask you? Uh, yeah, I think, I think a lot of companies, uh, because we, we've been uh, looking to open this up to our customers, I think, you know, people are wondering if they should migrate, like how, how does that relate to like an intent base? Uh, chatbot, do everybody need to rebuild entirely from scratch? And I think, I think there's not going to be much need to rebuild from scratch. There's, uh, there's the way to port, you know, the old chatbots using legacy and I'll use to, to this new, this new paradigm, which is, will be pretty straightforward. So, um, yeah. Perfect. And so we had one other question. Let's see. Uh, it, is the challenge filtering out messages or accurately segmenting the utterances into individual intents? Uh, the latter, yeah. I, I, okay. I can share a lot of it, but uh -huh. all the details will be shared, but it, it does segment all the intents into individual intents and then regrouping everything uh, as a single answer. Got it. Perfect. Well, we're very, uh, very excited. Are you planning to expand beyond uh, using markdown files as a structure to create a book, for example, like wikis, SharePoint, et cetera? Uh, that's definitely top of mind. Yeah. Uh, for now, it, it requires, you know, that's kind of the, the information retrieval uh, uh -huh. problem that <laughs> everybody's trying to solve. So uh, we've you know, moved away from the information retrieval by a problem by having people create books manually. And then we will learn how people create books and how that, you know, maps out to the knowledge over time. And so, yeah. I see. Okay. So it's kind of similar to like uh, uploading questions and answers in like uh, dialogue flow or something like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, except that you don't need a question. So just the answer. It's, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is the holy grail to some degree. Yeah. 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 Automatic FAQ. <laughs> um, okay, awesome. Well, 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 thank you so much for, for being a part of it. And are you going to join us in the happy hour in uh, the Central Land? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So okay. uh, we have one. We have one more session, um, and then afterwards we're going to share the link. It's going to be here, and anyone can join. You could be a guest. You don't have to have an account. That's what uh, the centralized means, right? So uh, thank you so much, Sylvan, and, and we'll see you soon. Um, My pleasure. Thanks for the event. Yeah. Thank you for coming.